expected Harvest Thanksgiving service. A special welcome to those in our church who are back in church for the first time since March. It's wonderful, wonderful to see you. Uh, and also a very special welcome to the people who will be seeing the service later on on YouTube. We know that at least 50 or 60 hits every week, so you know it's delightful to think that so many people will be enjoying the service. So we're going to begin with our gathering prayers. So if you could join in please in the deeper time. So let us pray. Come in and be welcome here. Let us meet with our Lord God, the King of Kings, who welcomes all who come to him. As we draw near to you, gracious God, may we lay aside things that hinder us from focusing on you and your will for us. Open our hearts and minds to hear your voice, to listen to what you say to us, and then to act on it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God of harvest time, we gather together today as your people and your church to celebrate and to give thanks for the harvest we are fortunate to share in. Creator God, you have made us stewards of your earth. You have charged us to tend it, to respect it, and to cherish all life that comes from you. May we play our part so that we may sustain ourselves in our own well-being and share it with others, especially those in any kind of need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to just briefly introduce our service this morning. There are two sides to our Harvest Thanksgiving service. The easy one is to acknowledge how thankful we are for what we have. This is particularly important this, this year when life has changed for so many of and in fact all of us. Many of us have become aware, perhaps for the first time, of the vital role UK farms play in feeding our nation. While the food shortages we experienced in the early days of the COVID-19 lockdown reminded us how fragile the supply chain can be. Home cooking, baking, growing fruit and vegetables at home have become necessary but enjoyable, while many of us are now more appreciative of the food we eat and where it comes from. This year has been challenging for all of us, but especially for the farmers. Unseasonal weather, especially flooding in the autumn and the winter, delayed planting, and the very dry spring meant the crops were slow to grow. And some farmers already are having to feed their animals as there is a lack of grazing. Added to this, migrant labour was reduced by pandemic travel restrictions as was extra income from farm shops as well as lets, holiday lets. Churches and community activities have only reopened if strict measures are observed, which means that we can't celebrate our Harvest Festival in the normal way, but we can do with what we are permitted and we must do it well and embrace the opportunity to thank farmers across the UK who grow our food for us. First, we'll see how easy it is to acknowledge how grateful we are. Then we're going to think about the harder part, being so moved by the fact we are provided for, and we are so well off in comparison to others, that we ought to recognise our responsibility to share, to sometimes share what we have and always to make an effort to make sure that the world's resources are shared out fairly. So let's begin with an activity that we need everyone to join in. 
So you can see it on the screen. There is a response. No, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. There is music to this, but of course, unfortunately, we can't sing it. And so every time I've done my little bit, will you do the response, please? So, for autumn days and autumn leaves, no, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. For autumn fruits and harvest fields, no, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. For refreshing rain and lovely flowers, no, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you, Father God. For changing seasons and nature's gifts, no, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. For the beauty of the world in which we live. No, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. For the food we eat and the clothes we wear every day. No, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you. I mustn't forget. For the food we eat, I'm sorry, for the weather, the animals, and all varieties of plants. No, I mustn't forget. No, I mustn't forget to say a great big thank you, Father God, for these and all your gifts to us. I mustn't forget. And now, to show our appreciation, we're going to bring our special harvest gifts. So Kathleen is going to play We Plough the Fields and Scatter, which normally we would thoroughly enjoy singing. And as she's playing, will you just come up again the distance, please? And Maureen and Jill will receive the flowers. And then if you'd like to walk behind the screen and back down that side of the church. <laughs> to bless these gifts given with love and concern for others 
We ask too that you will bless and support those members of our church family and community who will receive them. And may the gifts bring some joy to the sick and lonely at this very difficult time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry about the crackling. Uh, now we're going to have our Bible reading, so I'm going to ask Oliver to come out, please, and also me. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just say thank you to Neve and to Oliver for leaving us in that way. And that's something else that we must never forget in any service, and that's to tell God how sorry we are for the things we've not done very well this last week or at all in our lives. So let us pray. God of gracious love, of justice and salvation, we are sorry for the ten times when we have forgotten you, forgotten all that you have done for us, and in our busyness have closed our eyes to the needs of others. In your mercy, Amen. Father, forgive us. Lord, you made us to be one family, yet we have many divided peoples and countries. In your mercy, Father, forgive us. Lord, you came as a man to show us how to love one another, yet we sometimes fail to show that love to others. In your mercy, Father, forgive us. Lord, you rejoice in the differences of various peoples, yet we make, we make them a cause of quarrels and divisions. In your mercy, Father, forgive us. Keep us mindful of all your blessings in our lives and aware of the need to share them with others. Please forgive us for ways in which we have failed to reach these standards and help us to follow Jesus' example each day. For his name's sake, Amen. When we are truly sorry for our failings, God, our Heavenly Father keeps his promises to forgive us in his loving mercy and to help us to be faithful each day in building up our treasures in heaven. If we have faith. Amen. Amen. So let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the 
kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now I have to go somewhere else to do the uh, talk. So, after that dramatic in, in, in beginning introduction, way back in 1928, an American professor wrote in his book, Salt in the Attic, a ship in harbour is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. And also in his book, he who thanks but with, with lips, thanks but in part, the full, the true thanksgiving comes from the heart. God loves a cheerful giver is one of the best known, though I don't think it's a very popular Bible quote. Yet I've chosen this as the title for my talk because I think all three of these statements are an emphasis on the second strand of our Harvest Festival service that God wants us to remember our wonderful privilege and responsibility to share the great blessings we are given, particularly at harvest time. I don't know about you, but I always feel that there's something wonderful about harvest time. I look forward to it for as long as I can remember every year making ready something to bring to church to give to someone else and say thank you to God. It's a favourite service for many, I think, a time when we can share in a, a sense of achievement and celebration, although Cass reminded us that COVID-19 has made it rather different this year. Well, although we're still not allowed to sing together this morning, I think that so far we've enjoyed saying thank you to God in, in two ways, with what we've said and what we've done. Thank you for all that God's provided for us. And I'm sure that the people who receive these gifts of flowers and plants will be very thrilled to think that we've actually thought about them. Here in our own country, before large supermarkets and such luxuries, harvest was a big occasion when people gathered right upright, sorry, upright crops <laughs> and stored them for the months when there wasn't much food about. And I expect those of you who even now tend your own homegrown vegetables and fruits are always very thrilled when we see them ripen and you can eat them and enjoy them. And I think it's probably the same with people who share the harvest of the sea and those who train their, use their animals to provide us with a lot of foodstuffs to sustain us uh, as we go through our lives. The Bible has much to say about the harvest too. Creation, land, agriculture and farming are things that run through both the Old and the New Testaments. And in chapter 26 of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses reminds God's people, the Israelites, that all food is a gift from God, to whom they should offer the first fruits of their harvest, but also make sure that everyone gets a share, including the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. And of course, many of the Psalms are in praise and thanksgiving to God for all he's done. And then I thought, so are the miracles, lots of Jesus' well, all of Jesus' miracles show concern for people's needs. Well, sometimes he chose to rely on other people, didn't he? Like the servants at the, at the wedding in Cana, and also the boy with the five loaves and fishes when he, he fed 5,000. And those are just a few examples that came to my mind quickly when I was preparing this. But there are many, many others that you might uh, think about. Because God's rules are always clear and precise. 
dare I say, unlikely, COVID-19 rules our government expects us to understand and keep. <laughs> Maybe. So you have to wait if you can't hear me at all, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I wonder if you've had your cereal this morning. Yeah? Most of you have had it in your heads. Good. Well, let's think about that. Have any of you had dry snaps? These, these first few are from the uh, uh, breakfast club at school. Dry snaps, anybody have those? Yes? Yes? Somebody's shaking me. <laughs> Waving their hands. Uh, Kellogg's Cocoa Pops? Yeah?
got edit for themselves. And the United Nations estimates that 122 million of the 144 million starving and stunted children live in countries affected by conflict, and that 14 million under fives worldwide suffer from acute nutrition. And yet, only a quarter of them have access to life saving treatment. I'm sure you'll agree with me that those are really shameful facts about our humanity. So, what about us? Do we find that the more we have, the more we want? Or are we content with what we already have? Have the devastating effects of the pandemic caused us to take stock of, of what really is important in life? Do we listen to what God says about sharing and then do it in our daily lives? How can we share what we have? I think these are all important considerations for us as Christians, as God's people. I can only humbly suggest this morning that even when we fail, we should keep in mind Cast's introduction this morning, that we should try to be good stewards of all that God has provided and share it. That we read God's word as often as we can and strive to follow Jesus' example every day. Well, there's no brilliant new suggestions there, but I think each one of them is an important aspiration that each one of us should have as God's children. Just think quietly for a few moments about those horrible statistics and what else we've said about fathers so far. Lord, you made a beautiful world full of goodness, beauty, love and nourishment. Help us to care and keep it safe with wisdom, thought and deed. May we have the grace to enjoy all it offers with generosity, not greed. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Now, before we have our prayers of intercession, we're just going to listen to one of our, well, one of my favourite hymns. <laughs> Generous God, as we celebrate your goodness, 
was to us, we also learn that the Christ said those whose holiness have failed. We pray for those whose land and crops have been affected by flood, drought or fire, by pests and diseases. For those whose families are hungry and for those who need stable livestock for the future. Lord of all harvest, please help, help us to be among us. And share what we have willingly. Loving God, we also remember this morning those who, those here and abroad who are dependent on food banks. Help us to begin to be generous givers our money, of our money, food, and times as Christian disciples in this place and show us how to be steward of the resources of your world for the benefit of all people. Lord of all harvests, please help us to more others. And share what we have willingly. Loving God, we give thanks for those who produce our food for farmers, fishermen, factory and shop workers. We pray for those who whom that this, this has been a difficult year. For farmers that have battled the weather to grow food, delivery drivers, shop workers who kept working despite the pandemic, help us to support each other. Lord of all harvest, please help us to love others. We pray for seasonable weather, good growth and good yields, so that there may be abundant harvest to feed the hungry people in parts of the world, for safe work practices and healthy habits for all workers, so that people and communities may flourish and be strong. For health and happiness in the home, back life, and of all, and for families to work together with love, respect, and harmony. Lord of all harvest, please help us to love others. And share what we have willingly. And for our affirmation of faith, we, we believe, believe in God. God. From whom every family on earth is named. We believe in God's Son, who lives in our hearts, who created us, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down. Before I refer to the notices, um, I want to say a very big thank you to Joan for her part in putting together the service for us this morning. I want to thank Maureen and Jill and everybody else who's helped. Uh, Hilary, who is with us this morning, um, for all these beautiful decorations. I hope you looked at the flowers in the lobby, particularly as you came in and this wonderful display here. So thank you so much. Thank you too to everybody who has taken part, to our children especially. You know, they are always so willing to take part. And I'm sure you appreciate it. It's quite an ordeal for youngsters to come up and stand here. It's not easy for anybody, even when you've been a teacher, it's not that easy. And so to have children who are so willing to come and do it, I think it's wonderful. Can we just give them a thanks? <laughs> and didn't they all read well? Yeah. All of them. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you also to Kathleen, our organist, who is always so supportive uh, and helpful to us, whatever we ask her to do. And of course, to our gentleman here at the front. What would we do without Lee's? Thank you so much. You know, this has been going on, the work that he's been doing ever since Ian went, 
and he does it so willingly and we are so very, very grateful. So thank you once again. Uh, and now the notices, there are one or two that aren't actually on the sheet, so I'll start with those first. Uh, a very kind neighbour of Wendy has donated some beautiful, beautiful cooking apples and they're on the pew at the back. So if you would like to take some, perhaps you would like to make a small donation as a thank you, which could go to the Bishop's Harvest Appeal. And there's a special, one of our special collecting dishes there where you can make your donations. And of course there's our usual plate for any donations for the church. So thank you very much to Wendy for bringing those in. Um, we've had to make a change because of this new rule of six. We were planning to have our APCM next Monday night here in church, but because of the rule, we felt that really it was pushing it too much. And so we're going to have the APCM by Zoom. Uh, and Tony is going to be our maestro and invite us all to come to the meeting, but we need to have everybody's email. Now, Heather has all the people's emails um, who are on the PCC, but anybody else who would like to be involved in the meeting, just to sit in and listen, if you could make sure, please, that you give um, your email address to Heather, and then she will send out from um, Tony an invitation which you could then put into your computer, into your laptop or into your phone uh, and obviously join the meeting. It will obviously be a short meeting, that's the intention. Uh, and next Sunday there will be papers in church which you can all collect and take home and actually use at the meeting so that it won't be necessary for you to have everything by email um, because otherwise it's very difficult to sort of take part in the meeting and try and read all the, the documents at the same time. So please, if you are going to, um, to join in this with Zoom, if you, and, but you can't come next Sunday, it is important that you let me know and I'll make sure that you get all the um, forms, etc., and reports that you need. There's still an opportunity for anybody who wants to be considered for the PCC. There are still some nomination forms at the back and there are nomination forms that the deanery is in at. So again, you know, if you would like to do that, please take a form, uh, just fill it in, uh, and let us have it back. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I need to mention, except, sorry Tony, Tony has run off copies of the prayer that was written at the suggestion of the Archdeacon uh, that we might all use um, whilst we we're thinking about um, and looking forward to having a new um, resident minister. Um, how long away that is, we don't know, uh, but um, the Archdeacon felt that it would be very helpful for all of us to pray, not necessarily just in church, but at home. So Tony's very kindly run off some copies. There are copies in this month's magazine, so um, if you haven't got your magazine, there are some at the back. So please do, I'll, I'll put these at the back, and so I would t and take one if you don't um, have a magazine. But there are, should be enough magazines for everybody as well. Right, thank you very much. Right, now we come to the closing part of our service. Now we must bow our heads. May God, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, who leads the lambs to their pasture and the deer to still waters, who multiplied the loaves and fishes and changed water into wine. Lead us as we go out into the world, ready for action, living as though God's kingdom is already here. And let our love be our treasure, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And will you all join in the next prayer, please? May God grant us to live for the sake of others, full of kindness and faithfulness, and may the blessing of our three in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us and all those we love, today and always. Amen. And now we're going to ask Kathleen if she will play our usual blessings. Would you like to stand?
and then I'm gonna have some mouth words to each other. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming.